Hello and welcome. In this video I'd like to show you how to work with vectors, matrices, and uh, images in GeoGebra. So to create a vector, you come down here to your input bar and you type in the word vector and it'll start to populate. It'll show you a couple of different options. The very first one just requires that you give it an ordered pair. So if I wanted to plot the vector 1, 2, I would use, uh, notice that I'm using uh, curly parentheses inside of the vector brackets. Vector is the function name and then the point that I'm giving it is 1, 2. And that'll create the vector you'll see here it creates an algebraic structure called the vector and u is equal to 1 2. Now to do a matrix I would do something very similar. I'm going to create a matrix called A and I'm going to use a pair of brackets, uh, squiggly brackets, to represent the outside of the matrix. And let's say I want the first row to be the elements 1 2 so I'll put 1 comma 2 in the first pair of braces and then let's say the second row I want to be 3 comma 4 and now you see that it's created something called a list. Okay, so now I can do something like I can multiply a times u. So if I do a times u, notice that I get an answer, but it gives me a point. It gives me the point 511, which is a point up here. But I want to actually create another vector. Uh, I want this to be a vector form. I want this to be an arrow pointing from the origin to the point b. So I could insert another vector, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to delete this. And what you have to do is instead of doing a times u, you say vector of a times u. Because remember, a times u is going to generate a, an ordered pair, and the vector function needs an ordered pair to create a vector from the origin to that point. So there we go. It creates the vector 511 as opposed to the point 511. So that's how you work with uh, vectors and matrices in here. Another key feature that I might want to have, let me get rid of these guys here, is that I may uh, I may want a vector that doesn't actually begin at the origin but begins at some other point. So if you start typing vector, you notice the second option here, and that that function requires two things. It requires a start point and an end point. So if I wanted a vector that started at the ordered pair 1, 2 and went up to the point, let's say 2, 5. What that would do is it would create a vector starting at 1, 2 and ending at 2, 5. So notice that this is the vector 1, 3 because the displacement in X is 1 and the displacement in Y is 3. Now I, um, you'll notice also one thing that I want to show is that whenever you create a vector out of A times U, and so that creates the vector 7, 15 in this case, if I come back up here and I change A, um, notice what happens to, to the vector v. So if I make this a negative 1, v also changes. So that's the beautiful thing here is that our vector is linked to the matrix A. And so if I alter one of either A or U or both of them, then I'll actually be able to change and manipulate the vector that I have. Now I can also insert an image in here. And the way you do that is if you come over here under ABC and you click image and you insert an image, now you just need to grab one from somewhere on your computer. Let's see if I can find one here that might um, that might work. Of course, I'm, I'm not going to be able to find one right away, uh, but let's just see if I can um, pull one up here. And let's see, I think I have an image somewhere in here. There we go. We'll put a Goomba in there. All right. So the, the, the image is actually specified by, and I have to go back to my move bar. I can, I can move this guy around and notice that it's linked to the points B and C. Uh, so if you right click that and go to object properties, you can look at things like position, where you want your corners to be. So I want my, right now by default, it creates the corners B and C. And so you'll notice here that that's where B and C currently are. I could also create a top corner point if I want to. And the way I would do that is just to give it an ordered pair. So I, I might call this, um, I don't know, um, let's say I want this to end at 4 comma 12, okay? And so what that does is that creates another point in here and maybe I can, uh, let's see, I'm not going to be able to change that. Let me create a point here. I'll call this D equals 412. That way it's an actual point that I can access and object properties. I will set this to be point D. So now it's linked to point D and you can see I have three ordered pairs that are acting on this. And one thing I could do is I could actually create a matrix out of these three pairs. So if I do uh, uh, bracket, bracket, and in the uh, first row, I want the elements of the X component of B, sorry, of point B. I could do the X component of point C, and notice what I'm doing. I'm doing X of C, X of B. What that does, that returns just the X component of those ordered pairs. And then I have X of D. And then my second row, I want my Y component, so I'll do Y of B, 
uh, y of c and y of d. And now if I press enter, you'll notice what that does is that precisely takes my x and y for my point b and puts them, stacks them on top of each other. And same thing up here and same thing up here. So now I have a matrix that contains those ordered pairs. Um, now you can also insert input boxes that are going to control elements of a matrix. So for example, if I come in here and I say input box and I input it, uh, put an input box in and I link it to say the value of, um, well, let me, let me cancel that for a second. And right now I'll just put an input box in, we'll call this test. And right now I'm not going to link an object to it. So I'll just call this box test. And then what I'll do is I'll come over here to this matrix and I will say, uh, let's see, I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to give this a name. This is called input box one. So if I, let me call this just IB1 for short. So IB1 is an input box. And if I come in here and I type in IB1 in place of that one, uh, whatever number I put in here, notice that in my A matrix over here, right now it's showing up as a blank because I don't have anything in there. But if I put in a three, then Um, here's what I should probably do instead. Let me create a new variable called uh, uh, first val and cancel. I'll just say first val equals equals four initially. Okay, and so maybe I'll just say first val like that. And then what I'll do over here is I, I think I made a mistake. I, instead of calling that IB one, I want to call that first val. And so now what will happen is you see that the first value in that matrix is exactly what I have first val set equal to. Now this guy here, object properties, I am going to actually link it to, I don't know if this is going to let me do it just the way I thought it would. Um, let's, let's delete this input box. I think it's best to put in the input box once you have the object created that you want to work with. So we're going to actually delete this guy. We're going to try to delete it. Okay, for now we'll just uh, we'll just unshow the object. Put in another input box. We'll call this uh, first value, and we're going to link that to the variable first val. Okay, so if I come over here to first val, click OK. So you see right now it's set equal to four, but I can change this and make it two. If I press enter, notice that it changes the matrix A. So I can indirectly control values of a matrix by actually creating elements over here. Now another thing I can do is I can actually show the entire matrix A. So if I insert a text box and I say, show me the object A, what that will do is it will um, show it to me. If I click on LaTeX form, that will show me the matrix that I currently have. So if I change this value, then if I have my algebra view hidden, which we usually don't want to show that to the user, then whatever value I type in here, notice that it changes inside the matrix. And of course it's changing the vector, the vector V because that's a product of A times U and I just changed the element inside of A. So anyway, this is just to give you some ideas. Uh, you can of course link this matrix to these ordered pairs by, by being strategic about it. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with vectors and with matrices and with uh, input boxes in here.